Our first guest tonight is one of the most talented men in the world. He's a multi-award winning recording artist, fashion designer, and shoe salesman. His new album is called Yay. Please welcome Kanye West. <laughs> Thanks for being here, and thank you for the shoes. Nobody ever brings me shoes. You brought me shoes. That's very nice of you, very kind. And I'll tell you a story, and this is honestly true. The last time, a few years ago, you sent me a pair of Yeezys. I have never in my life had more people come up and talk to me than when I was walking around in them, <laughs> to the point where I was like, this is crazy. I got to get these off. People are chasing me. Mm -hmm. I I'm worried people are going to beat me up and take these. <laughs> Usually, people wait like, uh, on, they see them sleeping on the street waiting for these shoes. Mm -hmm. Is that for you more rewarding than hearing people say they like your music? Both. It's both art, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Sometimes it's like the thing you are accustomed to hearing and you start hearing something else and it's more exciting to hear something else, but not for you. Yeah, when you, when you go on new creative journeys, it is exciting for people to appreciate that. Yeah. Especially if people, you know, didn't think that it was possible. Like when I started off in sh Chicago as an artist, as a, uh, I'm a, a visual artist, like I went to art school. Right. And I decided to start doing music and people said it wouldn't work out. And then I started producing and selling beats and I started selling beats to Jay-Z, Rockefeller. And that started going well. And I said, I wanted to rap. And people said that wasn't gonna work. They had this uh, term, producer rapper. It, it basically meant you, wouldn't rap as good as the real rappers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that started working out. Then I said I wanted to design clothes. And then that started working out. Uh, so what, it's really... What's the next? What's, what is next for you? Um, well... Space Force? <laughs> <laughs> you should... I would totally be involved. The... You should design the, the uniforms for the Space Force. Is that something that you would do? <laughs> If President Trump asked you to do that? I'm into designing. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your wife was here last week. Space Force! Oh, oh, hey, oh, oh my goodness. No way! It's his Space Force. <laughs> Somebody put a leash on him, will you? Uh, your wife was here last week, and she was, she's very nice. And she did something that I would imagine you're very proud of. She mm -hmm. went to Washington. She spoke to the president. And she actually convinced him to grant clemency to a woman who got life in prison, like real life in prison, for a first-time drug offense. Mm -hmm. Was that something that uh, you discussed with her before she did it? Well, she's super passionate about it, and it was amazing for her to see that dream come true. Were you yeah. ever concerned about her being alone in the Oval Office with President Trump? <laughs> well, he is a player. <laughs> people got really mad when you were... Well, people, some people were very happy when you said you like President Trump. Do you like... Do you think he is a good president? You, you're going to ask me, can I answer the first question you're going to ask? ask? Answer whatever you want. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, in this world that we live in, there's two main motivating forces. And I, I tweet about it all the time. It's love or fear. And you, you, you can't explain love. You know, my cousin is locked up for murder. And I, I, I love him. I saw he did a bad thing, but I still love him. Um, and just as a musician, uh, African-American, guy out in Hollywood, all these different things, you know, everyone around me tried to pick my candidate for me. Mm -hmm. And then told me every time I said I like Trump that I couldn't say it out loud or my career would be over, I'd get kicked out the black community because blacks are, we're supposed to have a monolithic thought. We can only like, we can only be Democrats and all. So, um, it, even when I said it right before I went to the hospital and I expressed myself, and when I came out, I had lost my confidence. So I didn't have the, the confidence to take on the world and the possible backlash. And it took me a year and a half to have the confidence to stand up 
and put on the hat, no matter what the consequences were. And what it represented to me is not about policies, and because I'm, I'm not a politician like that, but it, represent, it represented overcoming fear and doing what you felt, no matter what anyone said, and saying, you can't bully me. Liberals can't bully me, news can't bully me, the hip hop community, they can't bully me. Because at that point, if I'm afraid to be me, I'm no longer yay. That's what makes yay. And I actually quite, I quite enjoy when people uh, actually are mad at me about certain things. You must like, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I actually quite enjoy it. Because your wife was mad at you, right? I mean, according to your song, your wife was upset about that. Right or wrong, or even if I changed my mind about it or thought about it more, which I'm not saying I did, just place a thought out there that everyone's not thinking sometimes. Galileo, they want to chop his head off for saying that the earth, uh, that what, what do you say, the, the, the sun revolved around the earth, or right. vice versa. You know, so when you have modern, but the sun, futuristic, y yeah, but the yeah. but you, I don't, I'm not concerned yeah. about the specifics, sir. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you ever regret anything you say, or is it just like you just look at it like, hey, I put it out there, it's out there. There's no point in regretting it. I think people focus too much on the past and focus too much on regret. Even like when you deal with schools, like you take like the slave idea. My, my point is, I've heard of history class. I, I've never heard of a class that breaks down how you, you know, balance a checkbook or how you control your finances, which uh, my father never taught me that. And I've never heard of a future class. So they keep us so focused on history that we start to believe that it actually repeats itself and we become overly traditional, and we can't advance as a race of beings. We get too caught up in the past and what everyone's saying and what everyone's tweeting, and sometimes you just have to be fearless enough to break the simulation. And when I mean simulation, this is what I mean by the simulation. Sorry, I know you guys wanted to clap, but everything I'm gonna say is gonna be amazing. Uh, <laughs> Here's the idea why you, you're in a simulation. <laughs> Let's start with acting, first of all. And a two-year-old uh, screams at a restaurant, the entire restaurant screams, teach that kid how to act. We're all unpaid actors in some giant script that we didn't write. Simulation, a two-year-old jumps on a coffee table and someone says, that's a coffee table, don't jump on that. So it went from being something that makes him feel like Superman, he's got his cape on, to something where he has to think about this person is like a family member he doesn't like anyway. He's two years old, he doesn't give a about a coffee or a table. And he's starting to like calculate all these things. And by the time you're 40 years old, you've got a wall full of coffee tables calculating you into traffic, calculating you into your career choice, calculating you into this house, townhouse that's not quite as big as the townhouse next, and it just never works. You know, that's the simulation that I'm talking. That's what I mean when I say simulation. I, mm -hmm. I think I understand yeah. what you're saying, yeah. but I might not. But also, yeah. you know, maybe people don't want the kid to get hurt jumping on the coffee table, you know? And we are too protective. We always don't want someone to get hurt. Can you imagine me talking to my publicist before I said I'm going on TV again? Like, I'm... I'm <laughs> Like, I'm going on... <laughs> <laughs> you should be wearing a helmet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going on TV because it's awesome. Like, I, like, I, I love Jimmy. Uh, we can have a, uh, a dialogue about the president and not a diatribe. You know, it's like, we can, I got that from... Uh, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, I was talking to Is that right? Yeah. She, <laughs> I, the, shout out. Her, uh, <laughs> shout out to that bar. But, you know, it's one of the things I think it got met, missed on TMZ is the main thing that I was stressing is the idea of trying love. You know, we're always, you know, pushing out so much hate, and love can cure so much. Just to think, am I moving in love? Is this out of love? Not out of pride. 
Pride is a word that people often say in a positive connotation, but it's actually one of the seven deadly sins. And it takes too much ownership, but you can replace pride with love. And when I see people just even like go at the president, it's like, why not try love for one person to stand up against all odds and just hug somebody the way that Alice Johnson hugged her family when she got out of jail. That one by one by one, we can defuse this nuclear bomb of hate that we're in as a society by thinking of everyone as our family and how would we treat our kids, how would we treat I our I think aunties. that's a beautiful thought, but yeah. just in literal terms, yeah. there are families being torn apart at the border of this country. There are, are literally families being torn apart as a result of what this president is doing. And I think that, you know, we cannot forget that, whether we like his personality or, or not, the, his actions are really what, what matter. I mean, you so famously and so powerfully said, George Bush doesn't care about black people. It makes me wonder what makes you think that Donald Trump does, or any people at all. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back. And uh, Kanye West. Yeah, yeah. His album is called Yeah. We'll be right back. Kanye is on the cover. We just got this magazine, uh, Bizarre Magazine. There you are with the kids. Oh, they, they're very, very cute. Climbing on your head. Do you dress them? Do you pick their outfits? Mm hmm You do? Is that fun for you? Mm hmm Do you design outfits for them? Mm hmm You do? <laughs> Do they love that? I mean, do they yes. understand that process, that you draw something and then it becomes their clothes? Yeah, my daughter went to a fashion camp for five days a couple weeks ago, and I visited her, visited her, and we put together, we put the thread through the sewing machine, and it really brought me to tears to think about the 15 years that I've been working on apparel and for my friend Virgil to be the head of Louis Vuitton and for me to have this you know, $1.8 billion company out of, uh, you know, a thread going through. And she, she, my daughter asked me, Daddy, do you have a sewing machine, sewing machine like this at your office? And I brought her to my office and she did a bunch of sketches and um, my head pattern cutter made her dresses right there. Really? Uh, for her, so she loves coming to the office and doing sketches. Boy, that's so much yeah. more fun than my dad's office. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> One of the songs on your album uh, is, is about, it, you're in the song, and correct me if I have any of this wrong, you're imagining your daughter as an adult dating and men looking at her. Mm -hmm. And you're very, very worked up about this. Mm -hmm. Prematurely, some might say. <laughs> um, do you think about that? You think that far ahead? Oh, I think lifetimes and lifetimes ahead. And that, and you actually are imagining, like, guys, the objectifying. Do you feel like your attitude towards women has changed since having daughters? Nah, I still look at Pornhub and... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stuff do you look at? What categories? Blacked is my favorite category. <laughs> uh, you don't have to go into that. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want. But I mean, what's the point of being Kanye West if you can't? Let's break down the yeah, porn let's categories. Go um, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of uh, black on white, obviously. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's, it's mirroring your own. Self, your own situation. My own reality. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like doubly masturbating in a way, if you think about it. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I need that double. <laughs> I'll show you after the show. No, I don't want to uh, see you. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you have some uh, really heavy songs. One of them is called I Thought About Killing You. Mm -hmm. Is that song about somebody in particular? And is it me? <laughs> <laughs> You know, someone emailed me after that song came out and said that they had a, their mom had passed away and that they had taken 60 pills 
and that they tried to kill themselves and they wrote at the end of it, premeditated murder. So it's a... Uh, and that is a refrain in that you say premeditated murder. Pre that came from somebody writing you? No, after the song after came song. out. But saying that this person taking these pills and trying to kill themselves was a form of premeditated murder. Sure. And what I said is, like, people are so afraid to face what we're actually dealing with, whether it's opioid addiction, whether it's suicide, whether it's all these things. We would just want to, like, we want to put a patina on it and not, and not face it. And I think the breakthrough for that album, for me, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't do old versions of music. I'm looking to just find something new. The breakthrough was to be able to have a song called I Thought About Killing You in this, like, super PC Hollywood, you can't say nothing wrong, day and age. It's like Kanye West's first song, I Thought About Killing You, and take you through the thoughts. You know, I, I, the other day I tweeted, how to not kill yourself part one, because when you're an artist and you're creative and you, you want to give so much to the world against all odds, there's times when you can go into that, uh, that place and... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, mm -hmm. the how-to was try, don't be around people who make you want to kill yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. That was <laughs> good advice. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first one. I, I was inspired after seeing this Alexander McQueen film because this is a, a beautiful, amazing artist that killed herself, and he always would talk about it. He even designed his own casket, and I've thought of, like, casket design. I thought about a tombstone that said, are you happy now? Mm. <laughs> so... It's funny, but not funny, really, though, because, yeah. you know, it, it's... It, it, when you have thoughts like that, you have to be careful and talk to people. Yeah, but you have to be careful and... Well, not be careful, just be expressive and understand that all these people are sensitive people. Like, you get these celebrities and they get a bad photo and everyone just tears them all the way to shreds and you forget that this is a daughter, a son, a mom, a dad. And, you know, I think I fight for... I fight for all of us, you know? Well, you I'm, have a lot of empathy, I guess, if, if that's the way you're thinking. I do, I do have a lot of empathy. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a break and we'll come back with okay. Kanye West. Yeah. We're back with Kanye West. This is his album. It's called Yay. It's a beautiful photograph. You uh, recorded this up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And mm. not only this, but you put out five other albums with other artists that you produced at basically within like what, like a, a month long period mm -hmm. of time. That's a ton of work. Are you like, a, are you a workaholic? Are you always working? No, I actually slept a lot during the project. <laughs> While they were recording? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I have a team and we work together. I spent a year and a half after I got out of the hospital uh, and I would go to Amoeba record store and I'd just start chopping up samples. And it was very therapeutic because I wasn't full yay. I don't know if I'm full yay now, a better or worse, whatever, but it was therapeutic just to listen to those songs and sample and go back to being 14 years old in my mom's house. And by the time it was time to do the, uh, to put the albums out, we have a, a whole team at Yeezy Sound that will help come and do the drums, help with lyrics, help with choruses. And I'd give like six, seven people ideas that I want on the song. And I just go to sleep and just wait for them to <laughs> bring, I get what, a lot of working sleep. working while you sleep. That's a hard worker, right? There. I have to yeah. get it. I feel like you avoided this Album oh, title. yeah, no, I don't. I mean, I don't I mean what, it, what it says right here on the on the I hate title. being bipolar. It's awesome. I have a theory yeah. about you, so tell me yeah. if, you, if this is correct. Mm -hmm. I feel like you um, feel like being bipolar is part of what makes you brilliant, part of what makes you you, and you embrace it. Yeah, I think that's another one of those things where people are like, "How are you going to talk about it?" The funny thing is, this is something I was like on the internet before. It's kind of it was kind of funny, but. Bi it's not an opposite. It's not I hate being bipolar, it's awesome. It's actually, it drives more of how you really feel. It doesn't do an opposite thing. So I think it's important for us to have conversations about, you know, open conversations about mental health, uh, especially with me 
being black because we never had therapists in the black community. We never approached like taking medication. And I, I think it's good that when I had my first complete blackout at age five, my mom didn't fully medicate me because I might have never been yay. And there's times where mm -hmm. at least I'm happy that I know, like even like for this interview, I knew I wanted to stay in a calm state because by the time I got to TMZ, I was ramped up. So what was awesome is that the world got to really experience someone in a ramped up state. And that's when you get these comments that just shoot out, like almost like Tourette's. Because you, you have highs and lows. And when you have a high, mm -hmm. you're on a roll. And when you have a well, low, you're well, not. Well, there's some cases of bipolar where people go low. I'm, I'm one that uh, goes high. I see. Like, like Michelle Obama said. So you don't high. have extreme periods of, <laughs> of depression? Oh, no. No. Oh. No. Because I just say it. I'll say it on real TV, like, oh, I thought about killing myself, and then the thought is gone, you know? <laughs> wow. So all people need to do is get on TV. That's really the solution. <laughs> <laughs> well, they need to be able to express themselves without fear of judgment. What I love telling people is, like, who do you know? And you know, let's go especially black men, but, you know, I'm 41 years old, and I don't know anyone you know, that f up as much as I have that's still <laughs> as successful. Uh -huh. So I want to prove that you can get fat, you can say the wrong things, and you can you... piss a whole and city And you can off. be president of the United <laughs> States. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. There's one person. Yeah. Yeah. Kanye West, everybody. This is his album. Yeah. It's called Yay. Yeah. I am Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.